Hi, it's Miss Vitale. This podcast is on metabolism and it is meant to correspond with chapter 8 for AP Biology class. The cell can often be compared to a factory. Products are being made and packaged, waste is being produced and eliminated, things go in and things go out. There are bosses who control the place, workers who carry out instructions. In a cell, these types of jobs and tasks are all accomplished by thousands of chemical reactions. Metabolism is all of the chemical reactions that occur in an organism. When a male firefly signals the female, fireflies are actually a type of beetle, the female signal back. A set of chemical reactions occur in light producing organs in the rear of the insect. Cells in these organs produce luciferin, which is an acidic substance, and an enzyme luciferase. In the presence of oxygen, the energy from ATP, luciferase catalyzes luciferin to a molecule that emits light. This is an example of how cells put energy to work by means of an enzyme-controlled reaction. Light is a form of energy and the firefly's ability to make light energy from chemical energy is an example of life's dependence on energy conversions. Some metabolic reactions release energy by breaking down large molecules. They are called catabolic pathways. A metabolic pathway that releases energy by breaking down complex molecules to simpler compounds is a catabolic pathway. An example is cellular respiration. Anabolic pathways are metabolic pathways that synthesize a complex molecule from simpler ones. Energy is used for anabolic pathways and amino acids building into proteins is an example of an anabolic pathway. Energy is the capacity to perform work. It moves matter in a direction it would not move on its own. All organisms require energy to stay alive. Kinetic energy is the energy that is actually doing work. It is the energy of motion. For example, pedaling a bike. Heat is also a type of kinetic energy. Heat is the energy associated with the, asso- with the movement of molecules. Potential energy is stored energy. The capacity to perform work as a result of its location or arrangement is the definition for potential energy. A cyclist at the top of the hill has potential energy. The electrons of an atom have potential energy due to their positions in the electron shells and their distance from the nucleus. Molecules in a living cell have potential energy due to their atoms. This potential energy is the chemical energy that does the work of the cell. Chemical energy is the potential energy of molecules. It is the most important type of energy for living organisms. Life depends on the fact that energy can be converted from one form to another, like the fireflies making light from chemical energy. A chemical reaction occurs that transforms potential energy to kinetic energy. For example, sugar is stored energy. Cellular respiration releases the energy from sugar for the work of the cell. Thermodynamics is the study of energy transformations that occur in a collection of matter. We call the collection of matter the systems and the outside of it is the surrounding. For example, an automobile engine is a system. A cell is a system. The entire planet is a system. The first law of thermodynamics is the law of energy conservation. It states that the total amount of energy in the universe is constant. Energy can be transferred and transformed, but it can never be created or destroyed. For example, plants transform the energy from the sun. The second law of thermodynamics states that energy energy conversions reduce the order of the universe. Energy changes, for example, chemical energy to kinetic energy, and are accompanied by an increase in disorder or randomness. Entropy is the amount of disorder in a system. For example, heat, which is random molecular motion, is a form of disorder. The more heat that is generated during an energy conversion, the more entropy of the system increases. The entropy of the universe is increasing with every energy transfer or transformation. All chemical energy is eventually turned into heat, which is more disordered. As a system becomes more ordered, its surroundings become more disordered. 
For example, an ecosystem takes in light and releases heat to its surroundings. Whenever chemical reactions occur in cells, energy is transferred and some energy escapes the cell as heat. Cells are not 100% efficient when transferring or transforming energy. Chemical reactions, including those that occur in cells, are either endergonic or exergonic. Endergonic reactions yield products that are rich in potential energy. The reactants have little potential energy. As the reaction occurs, energy is absorbed from the surroundings. The products store more energy than the reactants. The energy is stored in the covalent bonds of the molecules. Process. Exergonic reactions are chemical reactions that release For example, wood burning. Cellulose and wood, which is a large carbohydrate composed of many glucoses, burns and the potential energy is released as heat and light. CO2 and water are products. Burning is one way to release energy from chemicals. Cells release energy by cellular respiration, which is an exergonic reaction. The energy releasing chemical breakdown of glucose and the storage of energy in a form the cell can use to do work happens during cellular respiration. Cellular respiration involves many steps. Each one is a different chemical reaction. Therefore, it's like a slow burn. Some of these energy release, some of the energy released during cellular respiration is released as heat, but most of it is stored in ATP molecules. Cells use ATP as an immediate source of fuel. Cellular metabolism is all of the endergonic and exergonic reactions that occur in cells, and there are thousands of them. ATP powers most cellular work. For example, the generation of light by fireflies, or the movement of muscles to power a bike. Right now, your nerve cells in your brain are using ATP to help you learn. Cells use energy coupling. This is when energy is released from an exergonic reaction to drive endergonic reactions. ATP molecules are the key to energy coupling. The breakdown of glucose, which is exergonic, is stored in ATP, and that energy is used for endergonic reactions. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. There are three parts connected by covalent bonds. There are three phosphate groups with an unstable covalent bond between the outer two. There is a 5-carbon sugar called ribose and a nitrogen base called adenine. The unstable bonds between the phosphate groups are easily broken by hydrolysis. This results in three things. A phosphate group is removed, ATP becomes ADP, and energy is released. Therefore, it is an exergonic reaction. The phosphate group can bond to a protein molecule, giving it energy, and the shape of the protein changes and therefore is able to do work. For example, this kind of shape change causes a muscle to contract. Once the work is done, the phosphate is lost. Phosphorylation is the transfer of a phosphate group to a molecule. Most cellular work depends on phosphorylation. ATP is a renewable resource that cells can regenerate. Energy from exergonic reactions cause dehydration synthesis, which turns ADP plus a phosphate into ATP. ATP undergoes hydrolysis, losing a phosphate, creating ADP, and that hydrolysis releases energy for endergonic reactions. All the ATP in a cell is used and regenerated every minute. ATP breaks down very easily, and an energy barrier prevents it from breaking down spontaneously. The energy barrier is called activation energy. That is the amount of energy the reactants must absorb to start a ch chemical reaction. In ATP, the activation energy is the amount of energy needed to break the phosphate group off. Enzymes are proteins that speed up chemical reactions in the cell. A special region on the enzyme, called the active site, has a shape that fits with specific substrate molecules. An enzyme works by binding to one or more specific molecules called reactants or substrates. Binding occurs at the active site. 
the enzyme and substrates form an enzyme substrate complex. The interactions between the substrates and the enzyme stresses or weakens some of the chemical bonds in the substrates. These stresses encourage a link between the two substrates leading to the formation of a different molecule. As a result of the chemical interactions within the active site, a new product is formed. The product is released from the active site, the enzyme assumes its original shape and is free to work again. Although this reaction has specifically illustrated the formation of a single product from two substrate molecules, other enzymes catalyze the formation of two products from a single substrate. Most enzymes will not work unless they are accompanied by non-protein helpers called cofactors. Cofactors are inorganic substances such as iron, zinc, or copper. Coenzymes are cofactors that are organic. Most are vitamins or are made from vitamins. For example, vitamin B is a coenzyme used in converting one amino acid to another. An inhibitor is a chemical that interferes with an enzyme's activity. Competitive inhibitors resemble the substrate and compete with the substrate for the active site on the enzyme. A non-competitive inhibitor doesn't enter the active site but binds to the enzyme outside the active site. Its binding changes the shape of the enzyme so that the active site no longer fits the substrate. If the inhibitor covalently bonds to an enzyme, it's irreversible. If it bonds with a weaker bond like a hydrogen bond, then it's reversible. A high concentration of substrate will make bonding of a substrate instead of an inhibitor more likely, but if the concentration of the inhibitor is high, it will slow down the reaction. Inhibitors are important in regulating metabolism, and sometimes the products of a reaction act as the inhibitors. For example, when ATP production exceeds demand, the ATP acts as a non-competitive inhibitor, interfering with the enzyme that drives the production of ATP. This is a type of negative feedback because in a metabolic reaction, it is blocked by one of its products.